Hello everyone, this is Dr. Zia Ahmed. Today, uh, there's a change. This lecture is not for the master degree holders. It's going to be the uh, audience like uh, MPhils in English literature or uh, people who are involved in the researcher in their BS English programs. And uh, by the way, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about literature review today. What is a literature review? How we write it? or uh, what is the right way to do so. But it's very much essential to first of all understand what actually literature review is. And after that, it will be quite easy to go through different stages of literature review. Well, I must say uh, that I should be uh, recording these lectures live mainly in three parts. The first part will be uh, like saying, uh, what is that literature review? A type of introduction will be made. And later on, I shall be uh, talking to you people uh, about uh, second part, which is explanation of the three parts, which are the parts of literature review. And then as a third part of this uh, series of lectures, I shall be talking about one example. I shall practically give one example of uh, how to construct or make or develop a literature review, whatever the words you want to use. So this is what uh, this lecture is all about today. This is only the first introductory part of literature review that we are going to have. Uh, I have also divided it in different parts in order to get the response from the students. If the people show their interest, they are interested in knowing these type of things, definitely I shall be recording further lectures on the process of research. I welcome Dr. Zahusa. This is something very honorable for me that uh, the very talented, very asset of Pakistan, like uh, Dr. Zahur, they come up uh, as a part of my audience. Uh, really, thank you very much, Dr. Zahur sir. And uh, uh, I will be also happy that if some response comes from the side of the students, which may not be my students, maybe uh, the other parts of the Pakistan as well, uh, because this lecture is not limited to the students who are working with me, but also the students who are uh, you know, working with other my colleagues and uh, somewhere in the universities may also respond to that so that we may come up with the best form of lectures next time which happen uh, on these issues. Your ideas, your comments uh, will be definitely taken care of when I, come, when I come for the part two of this lecture. So let's have a start. What is literature review? For this purpose, I shall be bringing before you the other screen of my computer as well. So uh, have a look at that and see uh, what you are going to do today. It's uh, definitely what is literature review part one and three parts are total. And today we are in fact talking about the introduction and then we shall be talking about part three and part two as well. Uh, well, who's talking this definitely written here, Professor Dr. Zia Ahmed. And first in this uh, section, we should be discussing what is not literature review. There are certain common myths that must be talked about first of all. For example, some of the students would say that just take a few paragraphs from here and there and put them together and it will become a literature review. Definitely it is not literature review. Same is the case with some other students who would take the textbooks of different authors, which may be relevant or maybe not. They may be copying certain passages from there into their research theses and call it literature review. Definitely it is not. Same is the case with the primary sources. For example, sometime the novels or the text on which we are working as a kind of object, as a kind of target of our research, primary source, uh, that passages come up mostly from them. And even if, even if they are not from there, similar kind of texts are copied in order to let us know. This is going to be the literature review. No, it's not the case at all. This is not your literature review. Similarly, some of the students think that they just copy some uh, parts of the research thesis done by anyone, uh, say by Dr. Zahur from Laya or by Dr. Rashid possibly. Uh, they may be taking these passages and putting them together, uh, just that there are certain words and terms relevant to their topic which they have chosen and would call it literature review, definitely it will not be there. Same is the case that sometimes the students have the habit of copying the passages, whatever the passages are available. Here, there, everywhere or anywhere, they will take these passages, put them together, bring before their teacher, okay, take this is the literature review. But remind you, this is not literature review at all. So keep these things out of your mind when you want to understand what is literature review. That is why, first of all, I am talking to you 
that literature view definitely is not this what we have been thinking so terrifying you in that way on the very outset and uh, removing from your brain all the previous concepts which you have uh, i have done definitely a bad job because uh, every one of you may be very satisfied that they are doing the literature in a right way uh, possibly that has put some full stop or a comma to that uh, but don't worry this is going to solve the issue in, in one or the other way so let's enter into further details what literature review possibly can be so let me show you the second slide it is here uh, first of all we must know that literature review mainly should be discussed should be brought up should be developed in three parts first of all the terminology secondly research is already done and the research gap terminology are the terms which we are using or going to use or have an intention to use in our research thesis these terms can be captured from your topic which you possibly intend to use or the theoretical framework which you are using or the other kind of literatures that you are going to use are the term or the or the other things which have come across to you while you are selecting your topic and writing on that some of the terms may be taken from there and these must be discussed definitions your understood definitions your dictionary definitions and your working definitions the thesis that is to be talked about in this part i should be discussing this part later on as an example also uh, same is the case with the research is already done here is the very thing which is the core and the gist of literature review that we need to uh, go and find out what are the research is already done for this purpose again we need to take care of the terms that are available inside our topic and third part of literature review is going to be research gap that at the end of the discussion we need to find a gap there where we shall stand and give some type of uh, idea what is our research going to be about so in that way uh, one should know normally what are the main parts of literature review some of the uh, researchers and those of the supervisors are of the intention that there should be more parts of literature review yes it is possible whatever the technique may be used in order to facilitate the student and the supervisor and the evaluator in order to understand what the research is about that would be welcome definitely but at least these three parts may be there let us go to the next page and see here uh, uh, in order to write your literature review what you need to do actually we need to solve a question first of all how does research begin normally with our students as uh, most of my colleagues will be agreeing and most of the audience which is sitting and listening to me at this moment they will be agreeing that we begin our research by asking about the topic to our teachers and all the time asking them what should be the topic where from i should bring the topic unless a teacher writes a topic we do not let him go and even sometime cups of uh, coffees and cups of tea are also offered by the researchers so that the teacher may speak out some of the topics this is absolutely wrong idea the supervisor does not have an idea what the research is going to be about it is the researcher if he calls himself a researcher then there are certain prerequisites to become a researcher researcher needs to do something and then definitely topic will come to him what is that first of all i call it a bulb a shining bulb which will burn which will ignite which will spark in your brain and some idea should come to your mind what is the idea what is the area what is the kind of thing you are interested in for example sometime we may be interested in the portrayal of the women in literature and sometime we may be interested in the post colonial narratology i mean the way narratives are developed we may be interested in that and sometime the kind of human suffering because of wars because of the migration because of the traumas because of terrorism all these things are coming into our brains these are the flashes which happen in our brain and if we are satisfied and happy with some kind of flash we must go in order to find out that there are something already done about these works or not or any type of dimension of these ideas have been talked about if this happens our idea will be workable so the student must have these flashes in his brain and ultimately go, should go to the already available materials uh, in the journals in the thesis and in the libraries and in the repositories maybe of hec or some other areas must go into that and find little pieces of research available there and if his idea to some extent is rejected even confirmed even or some parts of it are being confirmed that person should go for the research and then look out what literature is available when i say literature is available i mean the books which are theoretical and which are critical maybe those books may be consulted and same is the case with the uh, articles in the research thesis or or the articles in journals 
it's not necessary that we should go always some journal which is given a kind of category by HEC. It's not the case. Whatever the journals are available, where the, wherever the research has been published, yes, we should prefer the researches of categories like Z, Y, or even that of X's if they are available. But then the other should not be rejected. I am asking about these categories because these are more carefully evaluated as compared to the normal journals, which are journals which are not uh, not in that way evaluated. So that is why there may be some better material available. So the students should read those articles which are relevant to their idea, which are relevant to their area, which are relevant to their uh, textbooks, which they want to use, and then they should proceed further. And I think if a student has just read five to six research pages of anything, maybe that of the article or that of the uh, you know thesis, that person can suggest a topic automatically. So instead of asking the topic to the teacher, the researcher must give a list of the topics that about his bulb, about his idea, about his concept. He has got these three, four, five topics possibly. Yes, supervisor can help the student in order to reshape, reconstruct, and to make the topic as better as possible. But then it's the job of the student and the researcher to go forward and find out what topic, what area of research possibly can be there. So this is the way how the research should begin, and that is the way how your literature way should begin. Let me take you to the next level and see what I'm going to call literature review. Definitely, as I said in the last page also, that's not going to be bringing together, juxtaposing together, or attaching together, or forcefully uh, making these paragraphs glued together, it's not going to be literature review. First of all, the student should look at the topic which he has suggested, which he needs to do. Maybe the topic is not final, but still, there are certain variables in that topic, certain terms are available in that topic. Accordingly, that person should see what he wants to do. Then the research question. The research question is a very big question is a very big guide, is a very big leader that can help us understand what we want to do. In fact, research question is the direction. Same as the case with the objectives. These two things go to suggest to us the direction, to which uh, type of direction we want to go. For example, if we have the kind of idea of migration, there may be different research questions on that migration. For example, one of the way can be to ask uh, why the writers uh, of the post 9-11 era have started to write about migration. Now, this is the type of direction the question is being asked why these people are doing and maybe developing our research view accordingly. Similarly, the research question possibly can be how, how do the writers of uh, postmodern literature, for example, or postmodern literature, for example, or even of any other area, how they are doing that, whether they are doing it through the reference to certain migratory problems or they are doing uh, with respect to some um, narratological techniques, I mean, they are using certain language type of thing, or they are portraying the wishes and wills of everyone, how they are doing that. So what and why and how, these are the type of things we should be using in order to construct a question. And that very question goes to determine our objectives as well. And that helps us to understand which direction we need to know. Why it is important when we say that direction is going to be important in that way or this way. It is important because everyone knows here that once you have one concept, it can have multi-dimensional phases of its own self. It can have even 10 type of dimensions and even it can have 20 type of dimensions. No, you are not required to go to all dimensions. Just, just go very precise and go to just one dimension of your topic. And that will be suggested by the research question. And the same should be explored in order to construct your literature review. So that is the way how you should approach before going towards writing of the literature review. These sources, these type of ways, these type of directions and objectives may be taken care of and ultimately you will be successful in writing your literature review. Let's go next and see then what it is going to be. I would like to uh, tell you people through one uh, example that literature review should be taken in the sense of a ladder. That ladder which has not been made so far. I mean, it's not a ladder that we should pick it, hang it in the wall and climb up. No, it's not the case at all. That ladder which is yet to be constructed by you people. A heart will be constructed. Definitely it needs to long poles. Then it needs to a uh, number of short pieces of that wood or that of iron in order to be attached to, to make these spaces in order to get hold uh, with the help of your hands and with the help of your feet. And in that way, the ladder will be constructed. 
And so this ladder is going to be constructed with the help of its constructive pieces. Now, what are all these things which I'm saying, which I'm trying to tell you people? These are the things which are already available literatures to you, already available theories and criticisms by worthy and honorable critics and theorists who have given to you people. And then it is going to be the researches which are conducted by your peers, by your counselors, by your supervisors. All these things go and stand together in order to uh, provide you the material for constructing the ladder of literature review. No, this ladder is not a simple ladder because, you know, these ladders we use in order to climb up. Definitely, a ladder of literature review will also be there in order to climb up. But the ladders can be removed. The ladders have a very weak and informed foundation. And sometimes when you climb them, they are moving. And sometimes somebody else can come and make it move. So the ladder should be strong and fixed at one place. So constructing a literature review is like constructing a ladder, that ladder, which is definitely constructed in such a way that once it is constructed, it cannot be removed. It is the type of thing which will remain fixed in that. So we have to do the things like that, that the ladder is fixed. Now, how it will be fixed? Because of the things which, are, which you are using, if your material, if your uh, rungs of the ladder material, the poles of the ladder material, are very strong and the foundation on which you have put them they are very strong only then the ladder will stay now this ladder is to be made by you only that's the idea in that that's the kind of uh, click in that that if you are not present there in that way what will happen definitely your absence will cause the literature to go as weak as possible so it's you who has to you know make this ladder it's you who has to make this ladder as strong as possible and it's you actually who needs to and make it firmly stand at one place. That's what you need to do in order to construct your literature view. And the third idea, look at the third idea in the slide is that it's like making or developing an idea by standing on the shoulders of a giant. So means literature like science cannot be developed. Literature view cannot be developed unless you know who are the giants already available in that field, in that arena, in that area of the research. You need to go to, to these people in order to understand what you are doing and what is going to be done by you. Now, who are these giants? Definitely, they don't come from the skies. They are available on the earth. These giants are the people, the researchers who have already done this research before you in your area, relevant to your topic, relevant to your research. These people have done something there. And these should be uh, definitely uh, consulted. Only then we can make the things better. That is why we, why I'm calling it that we should keep on doing this uh, this kind of thing in order to make our ladder of research that literature grew as strong as possible. And that can be done only when we are using the materials which are developed, the research materials which are developed by the people who are already in that. So this is going to be the literature review. This is going to be the way and the path the literature review is being done and is being prepared. It's like uh, constructing a giant ladder, very strong, very stably present, and it's uh, it's very it's much, very, very much stably and forcefully holding. Only then one can go forward. And during all this process, what is very much necessary it is your presence which is very much necessary. If you are absent, if you are not available while you are constructing this literature review, at that time, the literature review dies its own death. Now, what is the meaning of your presence? What is the meaning of your absence? Though I will be discussing this thing in some next, next part, I mean, uh, I shall be uh, giving one example how literature review should be done with the help of some ideas or the passages that I will use. But here, I would like to say, that presence means that you need to discuss. You need to say that this researcher says this thing, that researcher says this thing. And uh, in that way, what actually happens that you are describing the things. Now, normally what we do, we just add the passages. Uh, even do not take care whether one passage is connected with the other or not, whether one passage is relevant to other or not. That is the way we put the passages together and call it as literature review. No, it's not. One needs to be present there. For example, it's you are telling the people what is being said by the other people. It's not the people who are there. It is you. And you are telling the people what has been said by uh, Mr. A and what has been said by Mr. B. And what do you know about them and why these are important in your research? In that way, you develop actually an argument. 
that is the type of arguments which will make you really understand the things you are you are basically developing the argument that argument which is helpful to your topic at least in the researches which are based on literature that goes to help us and that argument definitely needs to be developed by taking care of all these things if you become absent for example argument is lost there because the researchers who have already done it they were not knowing that somebody one day will come and he will use our researches to to develop the argument they will do that it is you person who has to do these things so in that way very little of the opinion of those people which we take as the form of quotes in our literature review may be taken very short very small more of your discussion should be there for example if you are writing one page on that one page maybe one or two sentences spoken by some purist or writer or critic or researcher may be used but later on you should be talking and describing how this opinion is useful to your topic and how this opinion is going to be very supportive for your topic if you are doing this you are present in your literature review and if you are not doing your accent other people are present no if you have to be present there if you are there definitely you will uh, you will make a very good literature review so that was all uh, from me for this day Uh, definitely uh, some of the things have cropped up regarding literature review some of you may be very angry also some of you may be very happy as well because i have broken some of the myths which were already present in the minds of the students because they don't want to read they just want to copy and if this thing copy it it goes away definitely the students our students are quite capable they can write anything but the copying has destroyed their qualities now my request to all of you is follow these patterns which i am trying to tell you and definitely in three parts i shall be explaining and in the third part one example of writing of literature will be very short example just like this in a few minutes will be taught to you and if you do so it's not a, not a very very difficult task everybody every one of you can do so so in that way instead of uh, going for what somebody else written has and as i should also write in the same way or by asking the teachers again and again what should i write i don't know anything i have no samajh nahi aari mujhe leave all these things aside just go ahead follow these things and you will be able to do so yes i i will say that this is not the final thing which i'm talking about there may be number of other things as well so i am inviting each and every one of you who's watching this that you should come up with your ideas you should share with me so that next time if we make the video like that we may be able to adding and taking care of these uh, things which are in your mind as well or if you have read somewhere i never give the full details in in any of my lectures because my purpose is to instigate the student that the student should go into various sources and there he should read those sources with the kind of uh, bulbs which i have provided with the kind of lights which i have provided and if the student reads in that way definitely that person can come up to me and he can uh, definitely say that uh, these are the things there and i shall be incorporating them so these are my saying about this writing of the literature review definitely some of the change has come and i will be waiting for the comments of these people as well uh, so uh, seeing you in some next video till that time that's uh, all from me uh, if you have uh, learned something out of that do not fail to uh, you know click the like or subscribe button button especially because it will be helpful in many ways So uh Dr. Zahur sahab I'm really thankful for you because uh, you have listened to this boring talk in a very interesting way you're present still here uh so uh, sure the cup of tea are always there uh if if it works definitely it will happen so so far thank you very much i will be waiting for the comments in order to develop further uh, about the second part and then the third part of this lecture of writing of literature review thank you very much all of you and that's it from me